Redbeer be trying the first double IPA he's had in quite some time. Little bit scared of it. And if you can't tell who it's by, then maybe you you need to learn how to read or something. What be going down, people of the world? Redbeard here, coming at you from his couch. Welcome back to another daily drink vlog for the beer of the today. We have got a can of St. Ambrose Double IPA by McOslin Brewing. Oh yes, this stuff is 8%. I am mildly terrified of it. Like I said, it's been a while since I've had a double IPA. IPAs, pale ales, things like that, I've really, really, really come to like. So I'm not really sure about the double IPA thing. And this can is obviously seen a little bit of abuse. I don't think that happened while I had it, but there's a good chance it did. R regardless, let's crack her open. Yeah, did that with no cut or anything for the first time ever. I just, it just came to me. I thought it could be fun. And it worked out surprisingly well. This is not all going to fit in here, so we're going to go meh. Nice pour, nice pour. Ah, tiny bit seeping over. Motherfucker. No idea why I went to put the full glass on my horribly balanced fucking stand thing there that was just that was just dumb that was not intelligent at all hey and then it also made me forget to say as always all the thanks in the whole wide world please watch my videos the beard loves you all so very very much yeah slow that down i said it all i swear Ooh, that's uh on my nose and it doesn't look terrible at all it's, it's actually got a kind of a, a pretty nice appearance to it but in the smell there's just something that says be careful <laughs> let's give her a shot Oh my god. Oh! The initial taste of it was actually like great. And then something happens with the finishing taste that I am not a huge fan of at all. The rest of this might fit in there now. There's not a whole lot left in the can, so oh, come on. You can do it. I believe in you. That's a really, really full glass of beer now. Yeah, it's just it's just a little bit full. Look at the look at the head low. Jello we head low. Yes. In case you haven't seen before, head low is a term I made up. Cause I'm so witty and stuff. Yeah. It, it's head that performs like jello when it jiggles. It, it jiggles. Remember Jello jigglers? It's a it's a head low jiggler, or something along those lines. I'm sorry. Let's ju let's just drink the beer. Mm. Stay. Don't change. You're changing. Ah. Oh. Yeah, that initial flavor is just like, it's hoppy and malty at the same time, but really, really tasty. And then when it, when it's done in my mouth, it changes into this lingering kind of bitterness in the back of my throat that is not great. Today being October 11th, on this date in 
1906, some people in San Francisco went full retard and decided that that they should segregate Japanese kids to other schools. Like, I'm sure they were doing the same with black people back then. So it's like, yeah, let's have separate schools for white people and black people and Japanese people. Full retard. That's, yeah, and yeah, it, it sparked diplomatic, it was a diplomatic crisis type thing between like the US and, J and Japan. Because it was like, Japan was like, seriously, United States? Seriously? Really? Come on. <laughs> In 1968, part of the Apollo program, NASA launched Apollo 7, and that was the first successful manned Apollo mission with astronauts Wally, Shira, Dawn F., L, 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 oh, fucking names, man, E, I, S, E, L, E, I think that's an I, it could be E, L, E, excuse me, terrible time, and Walter Hunt, Walter Cunningham, Cunningham, I almost said Cunningham, like Hummingbird, Hummingbird Ham, it needs to happen. I've got a really good sounding slap off in a while. It's uh, not something somebody should be upset about at all, but it, it upsets me. I will give it this. You don't get any hint of that 8% alcohol. Like it tastes strong but not alcohol flavor strong overall it is a really really nice it's it's almost got a little bit of a thicker mouth mouth feel than your average beer but it just it's very different this is definitely another one of those cans that it's like really can you're gonna put your label on there twice instead of some actual information like we have it says information and tells me the glass I should use that's not it's not that far off it's it's their glass I used so but yeah it's a it what is it it's a double India pale ale the hops are Cascade and Chinook IBUs are 75 served between 5 and 12 degrees Celsius I'm probably somewhere in that range. And the, the original gravity is 18.5 degrees Play-Doh. So, like, no ingredients, no really useful information. To maintain freshness, this product should be kept cool. Yeah. This is a really nice glass. I can't recall... It was a bartender at one of the bars here in town that gave this to me. but I cannot recall who or where that bartender and bar were. On this date in 1975, Saturday Night Live premiered. That's like the... Live from New York, it's Saturday night! Whatever the hell it... Yeah. George Carlin was the host. Andy Kaufman, Janice Ian, and Billy Preston were guest stars, I guess. But... George Carlin, one of the best comics, if not the best comic, to have ever graced the earth with his presence. Cheers to you. Mm. Mm. I think I may be kind of adapting to the taste of this beer. The taste, the aftertaste was not good at all. The first couple drinks, but now it's, it's not coming through as much at all. And I, I kind of like this stuff now. Aboard the Space Shuttle Challenger on this date in 1984, Catherine D. Sullivan became the first American woman to perform a spacewalk good for you that's yeah that's pretty badass like 
I don't know if doing a space walk will ever become a thing that the average person can afford, but if it ever does, I'm in. <laughs> that would be a hell of a thing. In the year 2000, NASA launched STS-92, which was the 100th space shuttle mission using space shuttle di discovery. Not the 100 myth, 100 myth, myth, really again. The 100th mission with discovery, it was the 100th space shuttle mission. I'm not sure what mission number it was for discovery. If you'd like to, you're welcome to look that up yourself. But still, they did that many missions, like over that many missions with the space shuttle and then just kind of scrapped it and decided, hey, we don't have any way to go into space. Let's hitchhike on the Russians things. Yeah, good job. Mm. Mm. I'm not sure if it's a temperature thing, but I am enjoying the taste of this a lot more than I was in the first couple drinks. It's got a huge hoppy presence, but at the exact same time as that hoppy presence is hitting you, there's this really, really nice multi presence. Like everything just works really well in it. And fuck you, fruit fly! Like, get him? How? How did he not die? Hate the fruit flies. The fruit flies. The blah blah blah. My mouth is not working properly right now. I may have had a friend over a little while ago and we may have had some drinks before this drink was consumed. So the previous drinks plus this drink being 8% means me is uh, like if this is hammered and this is fine and this is the middle, I'm uh, like there is where I am and like there's him. There's not a lot of difference between where I am and where Hammered is. This beer might kick me up to that Hammered level. It's, it's, it's strong. It doesn't taste like 8%, but, but it does. It does and it doesn't. If that's a sentence that is coherent. That hoppy malty flavor is really tasty. I cannot deny that at all. And yeah, that bad kind of aftertaste that was there was only really there for the first couple drinks. It's not there at all anymore. I'm not sure if my taste buds are at the point where they're like super quick, super humanly adapting or something, or just the, the temperature, that could be a thing as well. Wow. You know what time it is. Time to kill the double IPA, which I didn't bitch about that, but I should have bitched about that. Like, really? That's your name for your double IPA? You can't give it an actual name. It's just double IPA. It's, it's kind of unimpressive. So let's kill the double IPA. Drink numbers are last. <laughs> Overall, that's actually really kind of tasty. So, McAuslin Brewing Company. 
your St. Ambrose double IPA rating? Very solid seven. Solid seven. And that's like my overall, so come to think of it, uh, there's a date code thing, which I don't know what that exactly means. It's uh, not, not the best date code. No ingredients. I gave it like the very solid, and yeah, take two marks off. Because that's what I think overall. And that is going to do it for today's Daily Drink Vlog. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, then be sure to smash that like button. If you want to see more of my videos, then be sure to smash that subscribe button. And if you've got something to say to me, then put some comments in the box down below. But thanks again, and I'll be back with another Daily Drink Vlog tomorrow. Peace out! Yep, in case it wasn't blatantly obvious during the outro thing I just did there, um... The, the 8%, the, that, that, the, that, the, that. It's, yeah, it, it's there. I'm, I'm, I've, I've, I've crossed that hammered threshold.